makeup on. Um, <laughs> I was reaching for the Trini. I've become obsessed with the Trini and thought, actually, no, I really need to put something on that you probably haven't seen for quite some time. And because I've been having a rootle and a sort out with my um, products, I've actually got the NARS um, Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation. Um, give it a good shake. And I thought I'll use that because I haven't used it for ages. It's not the favouritest of NARS. I like the Radiant Glow um, foundation, which is just so gorgeous. But I like NARS foundations. Their formulations are always pretty good. But trying to colour match. <gasps> so, yeah, I'm going to do... You don't get a lot from a pump. So three pumps. And then I'm going to use the Glossier Future Dew and i just do a little so i've got that much foundation and then just a little drop drop a future dew and i'm going to use a brush so yes i have been i've got all my base on as well spf because i've had betty out this morning um i've just been obsessing with the trini bff um de-stress serum which i wasn't sure about when i initially bought it and then gradually I've grown to really love it, really love it. So I reached for it without really thinking. And I thought it would be nice to feature something else today. So I'll drag this one out. But yes, NARS just, they just do good foundations. Whatever they bring out, whatever I've bought have been really good. But trying to colour match is virtually impossible and you tend to find that it's either a little bit too dark or a little bit too light and i know so many people in the past who have bought two shades of the same foundation just to sort of get it right which is really frustrating really frustrating and it's a lot of money they're not cheap but nars i don't know they seem to sort of disappeared a little bit people aren't raving as much about about nars it's a lovely day, a little bit misty, but in a really lovely lit way. This, the whole town is just lit up looking beautiful. Right, I've dampened my sponge and I'm just going to... Sorry about the little buzzy boat in the background. I can see it, it's so tiny. <laughs> little tiny boat, very loud noise, buzz buzz. That is such a good foundation. It really is. You do forget sometimes how good things are. And as much as I probably wouldn't buy this one again, I've had Sheer Glow. I don't know how many times I repurchased Sheer Glow, but that is a nice one. Um, and you know, you only get a tiny bit out on the pump, but sort of three pumps is equivalent to one pump from another foundation, and that's done the whole face and given a nice finish. Um, what was I going to use? Oh yeah, concealer getting myself i've got the diego de la palma which was pr lift concealer i've got one two two i've just got a couple of shades in this i think this is going to be too light but I, I don't really need a lot so i've watched all of the crown with craig working it's not his cup of tea um i've because I've watched it, you know, previously, so I'm up to date. So we're on to um, Diana now, and I, I've watched it all. Um, I think there's just more questionable conversations around the Queen currently about the accuracy of a lot of it. And I think you've got to go into it knowing that you can't possibly know everything. And poetic license, they call it. But I think this has caused more problems because they've suggested things that probably maybe didn't happen um and made charles sort of seem more the baddie really um uh, but people oh gosh people were just so in love with diana she was a breath of fresh air she was like nothing we'd ever seen before i mean when she came on the scene i was only about 10 so i kind of remember you know that that childlike wonder of this princess and she was so young and pretty and more accessible you know she seemed to connect more rather than being quite aloof and the sort of royal family that we we knew um 
And I think people did look at Charles as this sort of stuffy royal and she was this sort of beautiful princess who just brought fun and light and laughter and she connected with people and she seemed to understand how to be at one with people where it was very much, you know, the royal family and the peasants. Um, and she really was, you know, whatever was going on behind the scenes, what we saw was just something so wonderful and refreshing. Um, but it must have been a bit of a shock to the system for the royal family, you know. Years they'd had people marrying into the family and they just slotted in and did as they were told. And I think to a point Diana did, but I think she also was so young that, you know, she was still growing and developing and I think she had a lot to deal with, an awful lot to deal with, but there's been a lot of poetic licence and I think Charles has been made to be definitely the baddie in it all and especially with the Camilla Parker Bowles situation as well and we'll never really know, really, really know um, what went on. Um, I don't think, I really don't think. Right, I have got um, Nudity, which is the Magnetic Luminous Eye Colour from Nude Sticks. I'm just going to run that over the eyelid. Mobile lid. Um, this was PR. I love Nude Sticks. I'd like to get more, actually. And I'm going to run it underneath as well. Just take it up a bit. They're very creamy, so they're great for working with, with fingers and they're very flattering as well. So yeah, I've watched the whole of The Crown. Um, the thing I found absolutely amazing, um, I mean, oh gosh, what she, is she called? Emma Corrin? Is it Emma Corrin? Am I wrong? Um, the actress who plays Diana, oh my goodness, it's quite scary at times. More obviously her, her voice and she does sort of do the bit of the sort of shy head tint, tilt that Diana did. But Gillian um, Anderson, oh I had a name block, Gillian Anderson as Margaret Thatcher, oh that is just amazing from the voice to the mannerism. She's even got Margaret Thatcher's walk, which was very much sort of almost a little bit hunched up and her body was sort of a bit forward at the top and she sort of walked along and honestly, Gillian Anderson just has every bit of her. It is quite weird to see it and hear it. A marvellous, marvellous performance. Really, really marvellous performance. Um, whatever your thoughts are about Margaret Thatcher, the performance itself was is outstanding. I, I sincerely hope that she's going to be, you know, going to get her many awards for that because it really is just brilliant, brilliant. Um, it's not even an, an impression. She actually, you know, she is her. It's almost disconcerting, really. Um, and I, th I, I do wonder about family, you know, people of famous people, that when somebody plays them and they're no, no longer here, how that feels to see um, the replication of your loved one. And as I say, you know, Margaret Thatcher, there's varying levels about Margaret Thatcher, but she was somebody's wife, she was somebody's mother and grandmother and of course that's a different relationship and I just wonder what it must be like for the family to sort of see that because they must you can't help but see it but the performance oh my gosh amazing right I have the Becca um Sun Chaser palette I don't think they do this particular one but Becca are very good at doing their palettes and things and I love everything in this and I'm going to use the highlighter I'm just going to pop that just under the brows so yes crown's done i enjoyed it um some of it i knew took a lot of it with a pinch of salt i'm not certain and i like helena bonham carter as an actress but i really don't actually see her as princess margaret at all um i don't know who I don't know who could have played Princess Margaret. I just don't see it, really. Um, even though I know she sort of knew Princess Margaret and had connections in that respect, I'm not feeling the Margaret. I think Margaret was far more interesting than we've ever been allowed to know um, 
you know, because she was the Queen's sister, so she wasn't particularly important. But I think there was a lot more to her, and I think they've been quite candid. And I kind of... She was never sort of a royal I thought about much, but I, I do sort of feel a bit sorry for her. Her life was very controlled and a lot of things that she really wanted to do she was stopped from doing because it wasn't the right thing and it must have been really frustrating for her to see time change and people relax a little bit more in their views about things and to know that she had missed out on wanting to marry the man that she really loved and it must have been really difficult for her but yeah I'm, I like Helena Bonham Carter but I'm not feeling the Princess Margaret at all. Um, lash primer. So that's that. I'm going to apply some of the Total Temptation Mascara from Maybelline. I received PR um, of this mascara and I loved it so much that I bought this one. So that's you know that tells you how good it is but it's coming to the end of its life you can just see when they start to sort of die off and you can tell with the bristles on the wand they just start to change slightly we watched a program last night um i'm never quite sure you know who's travelled across the world to other countries and I know a lot of you aren't from the UK so I'm not always sure actors and comedians that I mention whether you're familiar with them so I apologise if you're not but in the UK you will know and remember. We watched a program last night on Dick Emery who um, I didn't realise, didn't really sort of find fame as such until his sort of early 40s but he was very good at playing women and I think the thing is that Back in the sort of 70s when he was playing different women, which was really, he didn't just play one woman, he played different women. And they all had quite, you know, different characters. But women looked like that. You kind of got women to about 35 and nearing 40. And then suddenly at 40, they suddenly were old women. And they all had a very similar look and their hair was all set. And... When I look at him, he reminds me of sort of, you know, people in my town that I can still visualise now and my auntie diner and it just makes me smile because it's sort of a past that isn't around any longer. But yes, it's a programme about, about Dick Emery and his, you know, comic connections and also his, um, he was a bit of a ladies man, he liked the ladies, even when he was married. Um, he liked the ladies, um, but it was interesting, interesting to sort of hear his his story and, you know, he, he was a very good friend of Tony Hancock's and Hancock kind of helped him and he helped Tony Hancock and that kind of thing, because often you hear about Hancock as just this manic depressive who was quite jealous of people to the point where he'd get rid of them if he thought they were better than him. So, like, he fired Sid James because he felt Sid James got more attention. And I think Kenneth Williams um, suffered at the hands of Hancock as well. But he seems to have sort of settled with Dick Emery, and there was obviously respect there. But, yeah, we were just, Craig and I were just chuckling about it. And they were replaying, you know, a lot of his um, characters, especially the women. And, you know, oh, I like you, but you are awful. Punch. And he played a vicar with big teeth, which was always quite amusing. I think Kenny Everett took it the next step. But it was an interesting programme. I'm always quite interested in the background of people. And often with comedians you just see that side and actually behind the scenes there's generally a sort of bigger story um and yeah and he had quite a domineering mother which again mothers play a big part in a lot of comedians lives if you think kenneth williams um was very much his mother um was very prevalent um i think maybe frankie howard as well um there was something there so yeah it was it was quite interesting i'm going to use the highlighter i'm just going to i'm going to call putting highlighter on doing a lin because i just love to think of lin going as i load the face with highlighter There we go. And I'm going to use um, 
Uh, the blusher because I just adore this blusher. It's called Apricot Blossom. It's really, really pretty. Love it. So I'm going to use that as well. I'm not putting bronzer on. I, it doesn't look right. In the winter months, my skin just doesn't work well with bronzer. I kind of have to, for it to work, it has to be a more a grey tone than a sort of orange warm tone. Right. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's smashing. Lips. Oh, my lips are so dry. I've really neglected them really have neglected them because there's no point in wearing lipstick when you're wearing a mask I mean some people do and that's fine um but I no I don't yeah. lips <laughs> what am I gonna put on what am I gonna put on a lot of you really like that mac lip color that I put on the other day which was nice what's this one? Oh, that's a red that isn't a red I'm going to put on Lost Cherry by Charlotte Tilbury. I love this colour. I used to be able to put lipstick on without a mirror. I can remember when I nursery nursed. And the kitchen for the nursery was sort of in the centre of the the nursery itself. So when you opened the kitchen door, you accessed it through the toddler room. But there was a hatch and... The hatch overlooked the preschool room, which I was in charge of, as well as being the deputy of the nursery around the preschool room. And the only room that wasn't connected was the baby room, which was good, really. Um, but we used to sit and eat in the kitchen. And if you got sort of four staff in the kitchen, it was full. But I can remember sometimes just putting my lipstick on without a mirror and people would be, how do you do that? Because I did used to wear bright red lipstick when I nursery nursed. Um... I found a photograph the other day of me at nursery and I showed Craig and he went, what are you wearing? And I said, well, you know, just clothes. And I'd wear a, we always had, you know, like Disney tabards or Winnie the Pooh tabards and things over our clothes. And it's like, you went to work looking like that. And there's this sort of image, I suppose, people must have had of what a nursery nurse looked like. And I just think I opened the door to so many parents who must have thought, oh my God, who is this person that's going to look after my child? Never lost one though, you know, it was good times, good times to be had. But yeah, I'd just sit and put a lipstick on and I can I can see it now. Just how do you do that? And I never thought about it. I don't know whether I'd do it now. Um, uh, anyway. Right, thank you for joining me. Hope you enjoyed that video. I'll be back with another one very soon. I think this may be the last video I film in my 40s. There's a statement for you. Uh, so I'll see you on the other side. I will see you bedraggled and in my dotage in another video. But until then, bye for now. Make the most of this. That's all I'm saying. I'll see you on the other side, guys. Bye for now. <laughs>